This channel was in dire straits. Ad revenue in July 2024 was the second lowest in the last five years in the history of the channel, thanks to YouTube no longer recommending my videos. The only way I continue to survive is thanks to my amazing Patreon support. Please consider checking it out at the top of the video's description and help to keep the channel going. Thanks so much. Hope to see you there. If you know me and you know the channel, you already know this is getting a win. I love me a good detailed map and an anime. Helps to build the realism I crave. First of all, I like the gravity added to the curse. It's not some joke, it's a serious thing. And secondly, it's good how he sticks to his morals in being faithful. I continue to so be in love with the internal set designs in this one. The only other anime that goes as far as a Rumakun, I think. I thought her shock was really well done, not only for the length of time he'll be away and unable to help, but also because it's so dangerous there. Oh, that's gonna help a hell of a lot! That is awesome! And best of all, makes perfect sense since this is her bread and butter in this life. What a great twist! She really is the best wife and the best person for him as well. I thought she'd just be over the moon that he could quickly go and return, but no, bless her heart, she's worried about his safety in using the circles. So much wholesome sauce! Love how far along she's come in this story as well. A far cry from when she first turned up there. <laughs> that just made me chuckle for some reason. Another stunning, good looking view of the city from a distance. <laughs> So glad these two didn't just break up. I know why she did it originally, or thought of doing it, but yeah, this is really nice to see, I must admit. <laughs> Was gonna include that with the previous win, but nah, that deserves its own. Lovely to see. <laughs> nice to see this relationship also doing so well. Whilst it's not the greatest, I can really appreciate them going the extra mile to do hand-drawn horses. Nearly in every anime, you'll see them done via CGI because it's really hard to do. Glad it's not only the studio who did Feren who animates characters moving within scenes so often. I continue to appreciate how well done magic is in this one visually. Would have been so easy for the manga to be like, oh yeah, you jump into a portal. Instead, he made it so much more rare and complicated. There's even books written about it. <laughs> so cool, they got there safely. Take that win. Same as two wins back could have made them continue along their journey. Instead, realism is used in checking to ensure they can actually make it back there after this. I really enjoy seeing different sites like this. Makes the world feel so huge, from the home he grew up in, the village it was in, to the cities, forests, and stuff like this. Changing the music to really fit the vibe and tone of this place was a nice touch, I thought. How is magic can create little structures like this to rest in? What? In the hell?
hell is that? <laughs> Thank God she's there with him. <laughs> oh wow, she's a legit badass. <laughs> I liked how she dealt with this so matter-of-factly. <laughs> Instead of her getting all angry now for half an episode, she teases him for his words whilst under the influence of whatever that was, and that's ten times better. Love how they basically never seem to rely on CGI even for their larger beasts? That's a real old school approach I can massively appreciate. Look at the size of it over there! Such great world building! Speaking of such great world building, this town in the middle of the desert looking nothing like anything that's come before it. How are you gonna make food look so real though? <laughs> Runius being super quick to action, but also the bulk of the win has to be for him listening to her in 0, 0.01 seconds. I forgot how awesome it is that he can see ever so slightly into the future and then defend himself and attack. It's so good. Goodness me, he didn't half make quick work of them, eh? I love how he defends like that, gets them at a distance and keeps them there and then attacks. Wow! <laughs> that right there is scoring Max wins. Such a beautiful visual for starters, but secondly, it was the insane lore that that was a skeleton of something that lived. I love it so much. Haven't seen this dude in ages, what a nice and pleasant surprise. Because time passes in this anime, you get fantastic moments such as this, you really gotta love and appreciate that element. Rudy. Honestly, I know we had our ups and downs with him, but it's still good to finally see him. All of them, really. It's been so long, I can barely believe it again. Rudy. Damn, man. Even got me over here legit worried about him now. He can barely stand, but also doesn't seem drunk. At the same time, Rudius has now grown so much that even these words ended up filling me with confidence, and I'm just over here watching him write the script. Super important and prominent words, to be honest. It's not just Rudius either, his father looks older too. She's lovely, had so much hate all this time, but still came to help out, and then, despite all the anger getting here, she then says this when he says sorry properly. Huh? That reaction. I suppose no one really thought that she would ever settle down or be able to eventually. Potentially six years in there. I mean, that's harsh. Who knows what state she'll be in? Oh heck yes, it's this dude! Always wanted to see more of him. It's funny actually, I'm reading the Drizzt novels by R.A. Salvador, and when Bruno Battlehammer is mentioned, I see this guy! Thought the reactions to Roxy falling into a trap and his utter state of panic about it was so well done. Good. At least there's a solid chance she's okay. Take my win. 
No exposition needed. She's giving a hand of support. Breathe. She'll be okay. I'm here for you. And so on. And he takes a deep breath and relaxes and gets back into it. Brilliant. This book from his friend is so coming in handy during this trip. Let's friggin' go! Always amazed at how it really looks like someone wrote in it. I just thought that was lovely because you could just tell that's what he was thinking, watching them all calmly with a big smile on his face. I think he was extremely happy here. There, Rudius was worried, springing the wedding and the kid on the way on him, and yet he was this happy for him. Totally showing he was one of the top adventurers back in the day. <laughs> His face when he thinks this. <laughs> Both of them looking like absolute badasses right here. <sighs> I think we may have found Roxy down there after all this time, and he can sense her being nearby. But randomly, she looks like she's turned into a child or something. Oh, maybe not. Take a whim for the great series of attacks and effects. I thought she looked much younger, but maybe I'm remembering it wrong, as it's been so long for me since I last saw her. Just see for yourself how terrifying this would be. The voice actress did an amazing job of relaying that to us. Oh, it got so close to her! <sighs> Let's go. Max wins to end this great episode. Oh my goodness, I loved that ending. He found her. Finally. Getting to see how she fought so hard to stay alive, how she tried everything she could to find a way out of there, being beat down time and again, but still refusing to give up. Ah, <laughs> oh, they're meeting finally up like this properly again. I love their dynamic, I don't even care. It's so good, it's so unique. <clears throat> <laughs> okay, colour me shocked, their dynamic no longer exists. She doesn't know who he is right now, egg is on my face, I'm gonna brush it off onto some bread and make a sandwich. <laughs> They kind of nicely brushed over that, with a bit of a backhanded compliment of sorts too. <laughs> Never ceases to amaze me how different the areas all look in this one, much the same as in One Piece really. A most adorable thanking! It is super sweet how excited he is to be around her again, but also how respectful he is of her as his former master, still calling her the title and respecting what she taught him. <laughs> no clue why, but that really tickled me. <laughs> the way her face changes there. <laughs> huh? 
I so love how magic effects are handled in Jobless Reincarnation. Half the time, I'm not even sure if it's CGI being used to touch, but however it's done, it's wonderful looking. <laughs> how come she has the most cute reactions though? Oh, I don't recall her ever being this adorable. It's almost painful. How can you hate on that greatness of animation and magic use? You can't. <laughs> Context, Rudy said, Dad, is it me or have you gotten stronger? <laughs> Animated multiple characters all moving within one scene like it's no biggie. Small win, but how insanely creative looking is this goblet and goblet holder? Don't think I've ever seen an anime take things like this so seriously. It becomes less video gamey and more real lifey as a result. A lot like ReZero in a way. It's insane. Now, whoever wrote the book got this far in general, but the main win is that we're now in unknown lands, as it were. No idea what to expect. Feels like an analogy about having two women, I'd say, after he maybe saw that his former teacher is into him? Pretty clever way of talking about it, really. Oh, by the way, the last time we saw Paul, I hadn't started properly playing the Trails games, so go ahead and take a win for the awesome Arios McLean from the series, Such a Cool Dude! He's so smart to figure this out. I tell you, from the early days to now, what a lad he's turned into. He's insane, really. Oh my goodness, she's absolutely without a doubt the cutest thing in this entire series. Without even saying a single thing, we know this is a terrible thing, because he looks like what can only be described as beyond shocked. Vince. Finally we found her! <laughs> it's really not looking good when spells like this get negated! wins because not only can my boy belt out some battle cries in spite of being on the older side now, but the running animation into a dive and cut was nothing short of beautiful. <laughs> can I also add that when you see him like this, you start to understand just how strong of a party they were? Like he is amazing! <laughs> She saved her life right there in such a stupidly creative way by the mangaka and put stupidly well into the anime. That is what I'm talking about. It's one hell of a battle cry. The fact that they all got out of there alive. Take my win. That was some edge of your seat action like few other things. It was so intense and constant. Great animation. To me, he really shows his maturity at times like this. Losing his temper won't get them anywhere. It's really one of Paul's greatest downfalls as a leader. Oh, she's worried about him, bless her little tiny heart. She was also looking afraid during the whole one-sided argument too.
And then times like this, he is the opposite of what I wrote two wins back. He's very appreciative, and rightfully so. <sighs> so good. He's obviously so overwhelmed seeing her again for the first time in 10 years and being so close but couldn't reach her and win that battle, and now they're all backing him still. Just thought I'd show and win that lovely compliment now that he's calmed down and a solid plan has been made. Hi. He's right. Not something you should ask your son to do, but it does make for a hell of a great moment. I know the monster is CGI, and as a side note, it has to be, really. With that many heads, doing it by hand would be a nightmare, but the attacks themselves, stunning. Oh my god, it's got me so hyped with the voice actress nailing her own battle cry, and then the huge flames he's pouring out. My literal reaction to that, oh, I just thought it was insanely clever to turn its attack into another head getting sealed off, hopefully. <laughs> They're working so freaking well together, get out of here. Ludi! Hi! Oh, this battle looking so fine, though. So by the by, so much insane credit to the power of Paul. He's lopping heads off en route to take off a head to save Talhand. The way the sound effect with her spell rose in the background there, but most of all, her being smart enough to dive in whilst it tore off his own flesh to try and heal. I think it goes without saying that this is very clearly getting Max wins. The best one of the entire second season. Gorgeous effects, amazing scream, the animation. Oh my god, so good. These two working in such close quarters to one another that he's literally dodging the fall of the head his father cut off to quickly burn it. I just got a terrible feeling after seeing that. I'll avoid directly showing that, but you know what happened. Roxy ending the battle with a great final attack. Those effects, though. He's come so far that he's able to remain calm in a moment like this where he's lost an arm. Okay, this is scoring three wins. Firstly, a max and then a single one. So the max is obvious. It's heartbreaking. It's so bad, I really could never show it. Um, yeah, it's bad. Next up is this man, Toshiyuki Morikawa, has now voiced two characters whose scenes left me stunned beyond words. Here now with Paul and the reveal of Griffith's body in 1997 Berserk. That's only natural. I mean, what can you even say in a moment like that? Two wins. Obviously, going without an ED to give us a longer episode. But also, I felt this was done really well. Like, it's so sad. Just hearing the music and seeing the sadness as she suddenly runs over to them, but then can't see Paul anywhere. In between my own tears, I wanted to give her credit for thinking of Rudius, who only just got back in touch with his father 
and already he's lost him. It's hit me so hard I don't even know why. I disliked him many a time. We hadn't seen him in forever. Maybe it's just the result of out of this world writing. His mother waking up. I mean, it's hard to believe how long it's been since we last saw her properly. Uh, uh... <gasps> Out of this world plot twist. It's Max wins again. Tons this episode, and rightly so. Also, it's the anti-anime aspect of, of course she isn't waking up fresh as a daisy. Too long to show, but we get one of those rare scenes where Rudius reflects on his prior life, how he regrets his lack of love towards his parents that he clearly has for Paul now. Also have one for going without an OP this episode too. Yeah, that's totally worth its own win. What an incredible job is done on his face to make it known that he's both not sleeping and not eating clearly. I thought it was clever that she said this. He said, your parents are still alive, and she replies with that. It was thoughtful and made clear of her own pains at the loss. Well... I did not see this coming. It's a shame. I get it, but it is a shame. At least he does feel some guilt. Also, in some small way, it makes it a tiny bit better that she was doing it to help him, I guess. I know there's a very painful past there, what with Paul cheating on her, but you can at least heap a lot of credit onto her for taking this lifelong burden on. Credit for showing him struggling to make the trip. He can't be all emaciated and then walk a long journey in those temperatures without issues. This was unexpected to a degree, kind of, but I think he's always loved her somewhat anyway. But also, I wanted to praise how this isn't some fairy tale. It's a very real and dark story, really. It's good to see that physical representation of his internal struggle. It's nice of her to try and take the whole blame when she knows that's not exactly the case. She knows how he's felt for a long time. She clearly felt the same when she saw him again. I know I already said as much, but it was nice that she said it herself pretty much right afterwards. For context, she said the others all said that you'd recover on your own, and then recalls this moment. So it shows that she knew him better than the others due to that, which is why she acted. <laughs> the whole scene is well done really by not concentrating on they slept together and he's married. It's about their past. It's about genuinely helping him, but also herself. <laughs> Also nice is how she's telling him, you don't need to console me. You don't need to find a reason for us to continue being together just because I told you this. How the Magica thought to include blindfolding them to ensure they don't know where the teleporter is. Since it's meant to be a secret, losing it would be harsh. Honestly, a little unexpected, yet understandable given her nature due to the curse, but I'm glad she didn't say this right afterwards. She clearly thought on it for months. It's 
Him having these thoughts whilst touching the area she lightly slapped the other night when she confessed to him. By the way, has any other anime in history ever handled this kind of storyline so well? None that I can recall. I'm really impressed how well it's been done. The most adorable series of confused reactions! Instead of them making out suddenly or whatever, she says, ask me again when you get permission, then leaves. It does give some semblance of decency, I think, as a result. A whole lot of not walking on the spot! <sighs> one heck of a plot twist! Also have one for going without that OP. <sighs> really like seeing this insanely worried side to him because his family are missing. Wow, okay, I can relax a bit. They're all okay, and she hasn't even had the baby yet. A very quiet let's go. Let's go. That was very nicely done. Thought that was a nice touch that everyone looked at the door sound, but his mother didn't move. The collective reactions to hearing the news of Paul. Right away it becomes clear that he had lost something in the process. Although I hope a master can heal it back fully, but it's not like everyone got away with our injury. For clarity, she said nothing we did could have saved Dad. But yeah, totally broke me that. What voice acting too! Damn man, what a great and powerful sentiment. Might have been nothing, but it certainly doesn't feel that way. Ah, uh, this scene is destroying me. Ugh. It's so well done. Sharing some of the hurt for the loss of his father, and not just leaving it all on Rudeus to blame himself. She's definitely doing her best to help things along for all three of them, really. She's awesome. Damn son! Right off with it! Okay, this is intense for me! She's young so obviously doesn't understand it, but at the same time she makes a great point based on the knowledge she has of what happened right now. This is painful to watch because my emotions are all over the place. It's not black and white. It rarely ever is in life where emotions are concerned. And of course, we know Roxy of old. <laughs> it was her who called Roxy to wait? Yes, but I was in my I'm glad she's being 100% honest because, as we know, part of the truth is that she fell in love with him when she saw him again. This is weird, but also cuddly, oddly wholesome. In some strange way, this actually made things a bit better for her. I mean, I'm sure she has some bad feelings about it still, but it warms my heart that she's trying so hard. So very much wholesomeness! 
<laughs> also though, this realism that they didn't all hug and live happily ever after. There's really no wonder she's still upset. Also, also great is how she herself is the one trying to keep everything running smoothly between the whole family. For context, she teased her for not thinking before speaking because inadvertently insulting her mother, but running off saying like, "Uh oh, she's on her top." is so hilarious. So wholesome! And just prior, little too long to show though, was Roxy saying it's okay to wait to get married until after the baby is born. She wanted to do that for her. The birth of the baby! This moment just made me think of his prior life, how he never had anything remotely close to this, and the love he's going to feel for his child might make him think of how his folks felt too. Nice that his father has a proper resting place nearby. His whole chat with his father's grave, thanking him for saving his life, allowing him to continue living and enjoy his own family now and everything else. And of course, who can forget going without an ED as well this episode to make it a big one. <gasps> wow, that felt to me like it was his dad tapping him on the back, like a well done, you know? Ah, is that who I think it is? A lovely end to the season there with this, I think. Ah, go on, one more for that picture. And heck yes, season three hype to wrap up the season entirely. Darth Weirdo, Fiji, Maldiao, Moshwin, Nick Windham, The Element Taylor Wars, Christopher Willis, Emmanuel Gonzalez, Fancy Turtle, Kepan, Mini Masha, Marquez, Nozomi, Orkeeper, Audubon Denisi, Steelers, The Upper Commander, Bird Without a Word, Brandon Greer, Brian Bayard, Cameron, Christopher Tarasa, Commander Cyrus, David Freerix, Devacool, Doggos for Life, Dragonstorm 35, Guru Guru, James DeFoyer, Your Edvinson, Kevin Alston, Comfroik, Miora Night Sky, Mr. Mansuit, Nightly Winter, Peter Milligan, Robert Jackson, Ruby Rose, Satakiari, Zions 44, Sean, Starkip, Tiger Lily Warrior, Alexander Schwartz, Ali 50, Amadillo, Arnador, Brainless Ben, Cecilia, Cedric, Cloud Garden, Dante Soul, Dante face, Dark Lord Bloody Soul, Donald Newborn, Dragon Defender, Dragon Boy 1, Drake's Daughter, Iso, Francie, Furious Mo, Garrett Vermeesh, Henry Jensen, Hoth Lozritter, Israel Caldera, Joe Crims, Jason Davies, John John, Jaffa6263, Kai Wolfspring, Kelnock, Kevin Nelter, Kevin 102, Knuckle Duster, Cody Niemeyer, Kai158, Kyle Jones, Laxor, Laxus, Liam Gagati, Lifty, Lionel Schultz, Luis Minito, Marvin, Mason Stelfer, Matthew Blancet, Michael Lewis, Miran Ardron, Mo Devira, Mr. Firecall, Nathaniel Gigramosa, Natsu Dragneel, Nick Monaco, Nick Pell, Nuvagal, 1928, Oliver Smiley Reacts, Olive Wolf, Onyx Caliph, Oscar I. Lopez, Owen Holoran, Porgy, that's a fish, Q Flash, Chris Harris, Rimuru, Rodiz, Roll Tide Wes, Ryan Deviri, Sadaholic, Sakumi Aorum, Sarcastic Truth, Shadow Cleanser, Snowy, Stan, Storm 970, TRS, The Danish Muggle, Thrasher 340, Tomo Sandy, Vernon Hogan, Wacky Normal, Will Sass, Willyman.